Thank you. No worries, it's all yours. <laughs> Well, good afternoon everyone, and how about this? Got a brand new motorbike. So, wasn't planning on getting a new motorbike, it's just that mine had a lot of troubles with like the electrics on it, and I was struggling to find um, neutral in the last couple of days. It went to town to get fixed, and it came back, and the day after it came back, it just flunked out again, same problems. It had gone um, in a lot to the mechanics to try and get stuff sorted, and it just kept happening. So, in the end, we sort of bit the bullet, and upgraded to uh, to getting a new bike so that one I got at the start of this season it was second hand and it just turned out to be a massive lemon so yeah like I said bit the bullet got brand new one here and dad's also traded his one in too for a new bike it hasn't come yet um, he he upgraded too just while the while the chance was there his bikes I think 16 years old so he's had a pretty good run out of it and we got offered a good price for it so just thought do both of them um, and then it's done so at least I got them from you now. They've got to get serviced every three months, I think, something like that for a, is it one or two years? While well, there's a warranty, don't know too much about that. Um, but yep, got a Honda. We like Hondas, like the shop in town, so that's the reason we uh, we went red. Pretty much the same as the last bike. The last one was um, like a, a special made farm bike, the same as this, that was a 200 CTX, whereas this is just a um, 190 CT, so, Pretty much the same bike, um, your typical typical farm bike, like stands on both sides, there and there, they put indicators on it, not sure why, I don't really use them, but um, I guess they're there for the looks. There's a couple of things I'm, I don't really like about it though, and that is, we'll start it, that the light on the front here stays on the whole time, so you can't actually turn that off and on. There's a button here to turn it high and low, but you can't turn it off. At least I haven't found the button, but surely it'd be obvious if it was. Uh, and there's also one other thing I don't like about it, is that there's no kill switch. So the only way to turn it off is to stall it or turn the key. Which I guess in the grand scheme of things, I'm sort of nitpicking, but it's just two obvious things that I've picked up over the last couple of days since it's been delivered. Otherwise it's uh, yeah pretty similar, got your carrier on the front there and one on the back. A little bit different sort of shape, the seat um, a little bit different, it's more sort of like a saddle, the other one was sort of straight, just the leather seat again, which is not too bad. Uh, and that little box there I think has got like a, a tool in it, just a, a little tool, should probably open it and see. No, just the storage box. I was wrong. Don't know what that is, that must be a lock for something. One thing I do like though is that it's got a fuel gauge on here, um, whereas the other bike didn't, and the speedo works as it should on the new one. And I've done 56 k's already, so giving it a little bit of a test run over the last couple of days. We were actually planning on getting a second hand one, we went to town and had a look there's one in there for four grand, I think it was three years old, had a few scratch marks on it um, and just a few wear marks and stuff like that. But at the end of the day when you're paying that and you can only pay a couple of grand more and get a brand new one, we'll just do that. We were actually going to do that, get that second hand one and, and a new one. Dad was going to have the new one, I was going to have the, the old one or the second hand one but um, he surprised me and just said he bought two new ones so I'm fine with that, that's good. But it seems to have gone pretty well so far as it should because it is new. Definitely better than that other bike I had. We also finished covering the stack. I did that a couple of days ago. So the front's all covered. And then I just did one row of tyres down the middle and just a few on the side there. The only problem I ran into was down here along the edge. Because it's so steep and that stuff's pretty slippery I couldn't put a layer down there. So when you get a wind like this blowing from the east, 
is pretty windy. Um, the side flicks up, but hopefully uh, I need to do something about that, whether I tie a heap of tyres together and sort of drape them over like that, or bolt them together, something like that. There is plastic from that wall underneath here covering it, so that'll work for now. But this green cover's worked pretty well. There's a lot of tyres that I haven't filled in there because I haven't needed to. That was the whole point about getting that cover. Bit of a time saver. It's also going to be nice too when I'm um, feeding out and I just have to roll that up and don't have to throw so many tyres off as well, so it works both ways. I also had the linesman out probably, I think it was last week they come out and put the wire up that pole there, they've cut this one. So the wires are just hanging down there when the diggers here, I'll get them to pull that pole out. And the boys came out and finished putting this underground cable from here into the shed. They cut this bit of concrete, brought a concrete saw out, so that's where the wires lead up now. And put this new switchboard in here, which looks pretty good. It's on a magnet. Much tidier. And also put a double power point over here. There was only one here before, so that works good. I think they hardwired the water pump out there into here as well, which, which works pretty well here. Pump main. And because we're getting into March now, it'd be halfway through March, the digger is only a couple of weeks away, so I have started cutting stuff out of the shed. As you can see, I've made it quite a good start. All the plants pretty much out, just need to take these slide pulsators out. It's the only thing really left, we're going to keep them because we might reuse them. Uh, and just these gates at the front here, I also need to take them off, which I'm sort of working my way up. But I've just cut them in sections like that. Um, and I just need to bring the tractor in and, and pick them up and then I'll, and I'll dump them in that, take them over and um, scrap metal it. There's another section there that came up. I've just done it all with the angle grinder. It seems to have worked all right. It's a little bit slower, but haven't got too much more to go. Although I do still have quite a bit of cutting to do out here in the yard. I think I'm going to take the out, back out to there because all this concrete is going to get ripped up and take most of those rails off there and along the side there. They can all come out because we never use them. This is the wire from the, the power lines. I think it's copper. So I'm going to recycle them because that'll be worth something. Pile of stainless over there, which will also recycle. All this stuff will go to recycling. And just need to take a few things out of the shed. Almost looks like it's falling over now. It's got a bit of a lean on it since I cut that. Oh, it's been up for probably. I don't know, 80 years, so surely it's not going to fall over now. Getting there though, the roof might be a little bit harder. Just a few things in here that we need to take out, but most of it's all cut out of here anyway. So that's the old switchboard, that doesn't work at all now, which is good. And then there's just an old chiller out here, chiller unit, so some um, chiller guys from town are going to come out and take that out and sell it to someone second hand. It's worth something, so might as well try and sell it. Slowly getting there and there's quite a little lot to do before uh, the digger still gets here in a couple of weeks, so might be busy busy. But it'll be interesting to see what this tray load of uh, scrap goes for. Just the old silage wagon, it was pretty... Uh, Pretty had it so we're just piling it all on there and then there's another silage wagon over there that's that's had it too full of scrap so we'll take them both over um, take the wheels off and then just leave them there but I thought I'd just give you a little bit of an update on what's happening today and where I'm at um, I also need to order some PK I've got enough here till the end of the month I uh, I rung up to get some more and I said I wanted 18 ton and only only 12 turned up so not, not what I was after, but what I'm going to have to do now is um, I've still got six on contract, um, so I might get another 12 at the start of next month, and I'll have to buy six ton, which won't be on contract, and then I've got another 10 in May, so 
it's not all bad but the price of pk is just shot through the roof um, i contracted this at the field days back in june last year for 300 dollars a ton and at the moment i think the spot price swap sent out a text the other day saying that due to what's happening over in ukraine at the moment um they're just putting pk prices up and i think it's sitting at like 500 dollars a ton now so uh things have increased along with everything else which is making it just that little bit more challenging but we're getting there we're getting there just gotta live with it i suppose but i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up that'd be awesome and apart from that see you next time